Aoyama, a student at Fujimi High School, is cleaning his classroom like always. The girls are happy to see him clean the class every day. A boy named Zazen approaches Aoyama and informs him that training has already begun, urging him to join. Before heading to the field, Aoyama washes his hands. The girls are amazed by the amount of lather he creates and find it impressive. Zazen becomes frustrated and insists that Aoyama should come right away. Once the warm-up is done, Coach Miwa informs Zazen about Aoyama's germophobia. As a senior, Coach Miwa advises Zazen to look out for Aoyama and take care of him. Zazen throws a bottle towards Aoyama and demands that he drinks from it. However, Aoyama skillfully avoids it. Coach Miwa promptly hands Aoyama a new bottle and reminds Zazen that she had previously informed him about Aoyama's germophobia, prevents him from drinking or touching other people's belongings. While training, Zazen grows more and more frustrated by Aoyama's deliberate avoidance of any physical contact with the ball. This frustration builds into anger as Zazen interprets Aoyama's actions as a lack of dedication to football. Zazen advises Aoyama to stop behaving in a spoiled manner and encourages him to play as a team player. However, the other players become upset due to the fact that Zazen, being the son of a wealthy businessman, always wears expensive branded shoes and arrives in a fancy car, while everyone else has to rely on buses or trains for transportation. After the training session, Zazen walks towards the dressing room. As he approaches, he notices a girl tampering with the door lock. Before he has a chance to inquire about her actions, the girl quickly runs away. Just a few moments later, Coach Miwa arrives at the scene. Expressing his frustration, Zazen conveys his reluctance to play with someone who doesn't demonstrate a serious attitude towards football. In response, the coach reveals to Zazen that it is actually Aoyama who diligently cleans the balls inside the dressing room. This ritual of cleaning the balls is performed by Aoyama after every training session. Due to his germophobia, Participating in a sport like football can be challenging for Aoyama. However, the coach explains to Zazen that despite his condition, Aoyama prioritizes football and considers it more important. In addition, a few players from Ashigami High School have arrived at Fujimi High for a practice match. Among them is Teikchai, who, similar to Aoyama, has been selected for Japan's under-16 team. As Teikchai approaches him, Zazen extends his hand for a handshake, but Teikchai ignores him and greets Aoyama instead. Teikchai urges Aoyama to not waste his time on the supposedly weak team and encourages him to join his own school. However, Aoyama reveals that he chose to join this particular school because there is something special and distinctive about it. This statement piques everyone's curiosity. After a few minutes of play, Ashigami High takes the lead in the game. To everyone's surprise, Aoyama, for the first time, makes direct physical contact with the ball, demonstrating incredible agility. He skillfully dribbles past all the opposing players and scores a goal by skillfully nutmegging the goalkeeper. Zazen is left astonished, as he had not expected Aoyama to possess such remarkable skills. Coach Miwa clarifies that Aoyama's goal was possible because he was given ample space by the opposing team, allowing him to maneuver without concerns of getting dirty. While such opportunities may not occur frequently, when they do, it becomes Aoyama's domain to showcase his skills. At halftime, the score stands at Fujimi 2 and Ashigami 1. During the break, Teikchai is amazed by Aoyama's abilities and advises everyone on his team to closely guard and mark Aoyama from this point forward. The second half commences, and as anticipated, Aoyama is immediately surrounded by the opposing team. Fujimi High is encountering difficulties in scoring goals independently. Rain starts pouring down, adding to the challenging conditions. With only 10 minutes remaining, the score now stands at 2-3, with Ashigami High in the lead. Coach Miwa approaches Zazen and inquires if Aoyama is injured since he seems to be moving uncomfortably. Concerned, Zazen goes over to Aoyama to investigate. However, upon realizing that Aoyama's reluctance to engage is merely to avoid getting dirty, Zazen becomes angry and confronts Aoyama, urging him to leave the field if he is not committed to playing seriously. The game resumes, with Ashigami High in possession of the ball. There are only five minutes left on the clock. Ashigami attempts to score, but Zazen successfully blocks their shot. As Zazen regains possession and launches another attack, Zazen misses his defensive move. However, just in the nick of time, Aoyama seizes the opportunity created by Zazen's miss and converts it into a goal, even though it results in him getting dirty. With that crucial goal, the match comes to an end. Zazen, impressed by Aoyama's performance, attempts to hug him, but Aoyama evades the embrace. Meanwhile, while traveling on the train, Teikchai ponders the enigmatic uniqueness Aoyama had mentioned earlier. As the day comes to a close, we got to see that the unique thing was this. The following day, after their practice session, the team returns to the dressing room and, as expected, they are pleased to see the room impeccably clean. However, it is surprising to discover that Aoyama is not the one responsible for it. Aoyama's aversion to touching other people's clothes is so strong that he would rather face severe consequences than go against it. 
Inside his locker, Ayama discovers a small toy cat, which raises concerns among the team members. The team captain instructs everyone to inspect if any valuable items have been lost, but fortunately, nothing is found missing. As a precautionary measure, they collectively decide to ensure the dressing room is securely locked from now on. However, the following day, the room is once again found immaculately clean. This time, a significant toy cat is discovered inside Ayama's locker, causing further intrigue and puzzlement among the team. On the following day, a girl named Godu secretly enters the dressing room and begins cleaning it, revealing that she is the one who had been sneaking in daily to tidy up. Going back in time, we witness Godu observing Ayama struggling to touch a cat, prompting her to offer him a handmade cat toy she had crafted. Godu explains that this way, Ayama wouldn't find real cats intimidating. However, before accepting the toy, Ayama insists that she clean it first. Following that incident, Godu found herself unable to gather the courage to speak to Ayama again. In the present time, as Godu is preparing to leave the dressing room, she is unexpectedly discovered by Ayama. Overwhelmed with worry that Ayama might perceive her as peculiar, Godu bursts into tears. However, Ayama approaches her and offers a more effective cleaning spray, assuring her, this will yield better results. Ayama recounts to Godu that he recognized her because of the distinct appearance of the doll she had given him. Shortly after, the entire football team arrives and discovers that Godu had been the one responsible for the cleaning all along. Godu pleads with them, begging for forgiveness and vowing never to enter the room again. After observing Godu's adorable nature, the entire team implores the captain to permit her to stay. In response, the captain proposes that if Godu wishes to continue with the cleaning tasks, she must assume the role of the team's manager. Filled with happiness, Godu enthusiastically accepts the offer, the team jubilantly celebrates this development. Within Ayama's locker, he discovers an even larger cat toy. The following day, after training, the team gathers in the dressing room. Upon noticing Ayama's towel hanging near his locker, Tsukamoto curiously begins to sniff it. This unexpected action surprises everyone present. Tsukamoto enthusiastically exclaims that the towel has an incredibly delightful scent, prompting everyone else to join in and sniff it as well. Prior to departing, Tsukamoto shares a post on his social media account, highlighting the uniqueness of Ayama's towel. The following day, during practice, each team member takes their turn using Ayama's towel, experiencing firsthand its extraordinary fragrance. In the dressing room, they excitedly discuss the remarkable scent, with even the seniors and captain joining in and utilizing it. Zazen is taken aback by this peculiar phenomenon, questioning its normalcy. Godu overhears the conversation, now growing concerned about how to handle the situation. The following day, clutching a baseball bat adorned with embedded nails, Godu stands guard to protect Ayama's cherished towel from the eager crowd. Unfortunately, Tsukamoto's widely shared post has caused a frenzy throughout the school, and every devoted Ayama fan is desperate to get a whiff of the towel, no matter the cost. As soon as Ayama finishes using the towel, a swarm of individuals attempts to seize it. However, with agility and precision, Ayama skillfully evades their grasp. Zazen gets angry and tells everyone to leave the field and stop chasing after a towel. Everyone leaves with upset faces. Inside the dressing room, a strong breeze blows, causing the towel to start falling. Zazen catches it just in time. He tries to resist, but finally gives in and sniffs it. The smell brings back nostalgic memories and amazes him. Nevertheless, Ayama catches Zazen red-handed. Despite Zazen's attempts to clarify the situation, Ayama fixes his gaze upon him and instructs him to discard the towel, emphasizing that he will never forget this incident. The rest of the team requests Zazen to treat them to a meal, as they have an important match against Takata High the following day and believe it will enhance their strength. Ayama, originally on his way home, also seeks shelter from the rain and decides to join them in the restaurant. Inside in restaurant, a girl appears to be following Ayama. Take Chai from Ashigami High is also present. Once again, he belittles them, highlighting their lack of worth. Demonstrating his strength, Take Chai greets Ayama and invites him to join their group. However, Ayama declines the offer. While everyone else is enjoying their steak, Ayama abstains from eating it. The following day, on the day of the match against Takata High, Zazen becomes increasingly anxious as the start of the match approaches and Ayama is nowhere to be seen. Ayama, however, is busy washing his hands. Kana, the girl standing next to him, is cleaning a bottle. Surprisingly, Ayama takes the bottle from her and begins cleaning it again, much to her annoyance as she had just cleaned it. Ayama explains that the bottle is dirty. Seeking Ayama's assistance, Kana leads him to the storeroom. Once inside, she locks the door and reveals her true intentions to prevent him from playing in the match. Kana is the girlfriend of Takata High's captain, and she has been informed that Ayama is a formidable opponent. Acting on this information, she resorts to blackmail, warning Ayama that if he tries to leave, she will loudly accuse him of forcing her. 
However, the closed and dirty environment of the storeroom makes Ayama feel dizzy, causing him to collapse. The situation becomes uncomfortable for him. Fortunately, Godu arrives just in time and comes to Ayama's rescue. Being in possession of keys to all the locks in the school, she unlocks the door and frees Ayama. With renewed determination, he rejoins the game. Despite Fujimi High being two goals behind, the match continues. Shortly after, Ayama successfully scores their first goal. In an attempt to stop him, the Takata players resort to fouling, but Ayama skillfully evades their attempts. He passes the ball to Zazen, resulting in their second goal. However, Ayama is taken down by one of the defenders, and as a consequence, he gets dirty. Following that incident, Ayama experiences difficulties in maintaining his performance on the field. The coach announces that only five minutes remain in the match, catching Ayama's attention. Just as the Takata high captain attempts to score a goal, Ayama positions himself in front and blocks the shot with his chest. He then proceeds to skillfully dribble past every opponent. However, the same defender who had previously fouled him attempts to foul him once again. Ayama surprises everyone by pushing his opponent and scoring the third goal. The captain questions Ayama's dislike for getting dirty, but Ayama responds by saying he hates losing even more. Motivated by his determination, Ayama scores two more goals. The game ends with Fujimi winning 5-2 against Takata. Everyone tries to celebrate however, he dodges everyone. The following day, on the basketball court, a girl named Mio is amazed by Ayama's exceptional basketball skills. Even the members of the basketball team are astonished by his talent. In contrast, Mio admits that she is terrible at basketball and asks Ayama how he is able to successfully make every shot into the basket. In response, Ayama simply replies, by sensing it. Mio is astounded by his answer and declares that she will now refer to him as her master. Sayaka, feeling envious of Mio's attachment to Ayama, observes their interaction. The basketball players approach Ayama and caution him to stay away from Mio. Nevertheless, Ayama pays no heed to their warnings and proceeds to clean the floor. A girls' basketball game commences, and the boys enthusiastically cheer for Mio, causing some of the girls to become upset. Utilizing her remarkable athletic abilities, Mio effortlessly bypasses all her opponents. However, every time she attempts to shoot, she fails to make the basket. Seizing this opportunity, their opponents manage to score several baskets. Some girls in the audience begin to laugh at Mio, questioning the purpose of her height if she is unable to score. Mio starts to feel a sense of worry, realizing that if she cannot enhance her shooting skills, she might lose her position on the basketball team. Seeking guidance, she turns to Ayama and asks for his advice. Once again, Ayama simply replies with, feel it. This time, Mio comprehends the message and decides to attempt a dunk. Although she initially misses the dunk, Mio's determination remains unshaken, and she persists in her efforts. Relying on her natural instincts, Mio attempts another dunk and successfully scores. The feeling of accomplishment overwhelms her with joy. Grateful for Ayama's guidance, she expresses her appreciation by placing her hand on his shoulder. The entire scene leaves everyone astonished. Sayaka intervenes, scolding Mio for touching Ayama without considering his germophobia. Mio apologizes sincerely, realizing her mistake. Surprisingly, Ayama doesn't seem bothered by the situation and remains unaffected. Everyone tries to touch Ayama, thinking he's no longer afraid of germs, but he avoids them all. People start to believe that Ayama is in love with Mio. Tsukamoto sees this and tells everyone, and soon the rumor spreads across the school. Ayama's fans feel sad and lose their energy to cheer for him. Godu is also feeling hopeless as she tries to make up for her shortcomings. In the hallway, Mio greets Ayama, but he simply walks away. Ayama asks Sayaka if she would shake his hand. Sayaka turns bright red but shakes his hand nonetheless. However, shortly after, Ayama collapses. In the classroom, a boy challenges Ayama to an arm wrestling match. Ayama declines the invitation straightforwardly. Later, in the hallway, something is bothering Ayama. He approaches Mio and proposes an arm wrestling match. Mio agrees to Ayama's challenge. In the classroom, as they engage in arm wrestling, Mio appears to have the upper hand, displaying her strength. However, as she applies more force, her button suddenly bursts open. Embarrassed, she hurries outside to fix it. The boys express their appreciation to Ayama for witnessing this ex-dubbing it the eighth wonder. However, Ayama still feels unsettled about something. During the lunch break, Mio realizes she has forgotten her lunch. Ayama kindly offers her a homemade lunch that he prepared himself. Mio is overjoyed and grateful for his gesture. In return, Ayama requests that she make him a homemade lunch the following day. Everyone is growing increasingly frustrated as the situation escalates rapidly. The next day, Mio fulfills her promise and brings the lunch to the principal's room. Ayama, being responsible for cleaning the room, is granted permission to eat his lunch there. Just as Ayama is about to enjoy his meal, a group of basketball players burst into the room and snatch it away from him. 
Aoyama invites Mio to come and support him in a friendly game on Sunday. She joyfully accepts his invitation. During the match, after Aoyama scores a goal, he goes up to Mio and asks for a high five. This unexpected gesture shocks the girls around them, who immediately assume that Mio is dating Aoyama. Mio quickly clarifies that they are not in a romantic relationship, surprising everyone with the truth. They regain their enthusiasm and start cheering for Aoyama once again. A new student named Yumaya joins the football team, despite having no prior experience in the sport. He humbly asks for everyone's assistance in learning the game. Suddenly, the judo coach rushes over and questions Yumaya about why he left the judo club, considering his skill in the sport. Yumaya brushes off the coach's inquiry and approaches Godu, politely requesting to help carry the equipment. At that moment, it becomes clear to everyone that Yumaya has feelings for Godu. The judo coach becomes furious, considering Yumaya's departure from the club for the sake of a girl. In a fit of anger, the coach tries to attack Yumaya, but to everyone's surprise, Yumaya skillfully takes him down. His display of passion and ability leaves a strong impression on everyone. However, despite his remarkable feat, the team can't help but sympathize with Yumaya because they are aware of Godu's affection for Ayama. Zazen becomes angry and urges Yumaya to return to the judo club if he is not committed to football. While Godu is engaged in cleaning, Yumaya approaches her and expresses his desire to assist. Godu accepts his offer, and they begin cleaning together. When Ayama approaches, Godu and Yumaya hastily conceal themselves. Ayama proceeds to clean the very area that Godu and Yumaya had been tidying. Inquisitively, Yumaya asks Godu about the depth of her affection for Aoyama. Godu admits that she can't recall the exact moment she fell in love with Aoyama, it simply happened naturally. Yumaya empathizes with her, as he experienced a similar feeling towards Godu. He approaches Aoyama and informs him that Godu has already cleaned the spot. Aoyama expresses his gratitude and proceeds to clean it without any issues. He cannot feel at ease unless he's the one who has done it. Recognizing this, Yumaya assures Godu that he will make sure her feelings for Aoyama are conveyed. The following day, Yumaya extends an invitation to Aoyama to join him and go to at a cat festival. Aoyama eagerly accepts the invitation, feeling excited about the prospect. They all make their way to the zoo where the festival is being held. Godu's face turns red as she realizes she will have the opportunity to spend time with Aoyama. With some time before the cat festival begins, they decide to explore the zoo together. However, Aoyama is the only one captivated by observing the animals, while Yumaya encourages Godu to express her feelings to Aoyama. However, Godu finds herself overcome with nervousness, making it difficult for her to initiate a conversation with Aoyama. As the cat festival commences, Mio also makes an appearance. Although she intends to greet Aoyama, her prior encounter with him gives her pause. Observing Mio, Godu's mood dampens as she starts to feel inadequate in comparison. Mio's beauty, energy, and one particularly noticeable aspect contribute to Godu's feelings of inferiority. Before departing, Yumaya suggests that everyone try boating as an activity. During their boating trip, Yumaya advises Mio and her friend not to interrupt Aoyama and Godu's time together. Godu, feeling a sense of inadequacy, believes that Mio would be a more suitable companion for Aoyama as she hasn't contributed much to their interaction thus far. However, from a distance, Yumaya calls out to Godu, urging her to express her true feelings openly. Encouraged by Yumaya's words of support, Godu musters the courage to share her enjoyment of the experience and her desire to repeat it in the future. Upon realizing Yumaya's affection for Godu, Mio's friend inquires about his motive for attempting to bring them together. Yumaya responds by explaining that his main objective is to ensure that Godu's feelings reach Aoyama, even if it means sacrificing his own chance with her. He believes that not every relationship is meant to culminate in marriage. The following day, Coach Miwa announces that they will be embarking on a training camp to enhance their mental and physical capabilities. Recognizing the benefits it offers, Zazen steps forward to take charge of organizing the training camp. In Zazen's house, Coach Miwa and Karin, Zazen's younger sister, discuss the logistics of the training camp arrangement. The following day, the team is ready to depart for the camp, but they discover that there are additional people joining them. Godu becomes concerned when she realizes that Aoyama is missing. To her surprise, she finds Aoyama meticulously cleaning the bus. The sight of the spotless bus brings joy to everyone. Godu's excitement reaches its peak as she envisions staying in the same place as Aoyama. Upon reaching their destination, everyone is left in awe by the luxurious hotel. The anticipation of enjoying their time there fills their hearts. However, there is a twist, due to Aoyama's germophobia, special arrangements have been made for him, leaving the rest of the group to stay at a traditional Japanese inn. This revelation brings disappointment to everyone's faces. Once they have changed into appropriate attire, the group makes their way to the beach. Coach Miwa enlightens them about the benefits of training in the sandy environment, emphasizing how it enhances balance and stamina. 
The presence of Mio and her friends adds an extra boost of energy to the atmosphere. The football team is then divided into two distinct teams, preparing for the commencement of an exciting game. During the game, the team captain injures his ankle, and coach Mio substitutes Godu in his place. Godu is thrilled to play alongside Ayama as she had bought a football in middle school to practice. Underestimating her because she's a girl, Kazuma plans to take it easy on her. To everyone's surprise, Godu effortlessly flicks the ball past Kazuma and proceeds to dribble past Tsukamoto and Tichai. As she nears the goal, Zazen attempts to intercept her, but Godu purposely falls down. Misunderstanding the situation, everyone believes that Zazen has fouled her and they become angry with him. Despite Zazen's explanation that he didn't touch her, Coach Miwa and everyone else is surprised to witness Godu's newfound skill. As the game continues, Godu faces off against Aoyama, leaving everyone stunned as she dribbles past him. However, Aoyama manages to make a successful tackle. Yet again, Godu intentionally falls down, baffling everyone. Despite Godu's intentional fall, it is determined that Aoyama hit the ball first, so it is not considered a foul. Aoyama takes the opportunity to express his dislike for such dirty plays. Godu feels sad and offers her apologies. However, Aoyama surprises her by expressing his genuine admiration for her dribbling skills. Godu is overjoyed to hear his compliment. As they venture deeper into the sea, Zazen encounters a barrier blocking his path. Karin reveals to everyone that their training camp is actually set up within a dome. Using specialized construction techniques developed by the Zazen group, they were able to recreate realistic conditions for their training. After a tiring day, the team returns to the inn, eagerly anticipating a satisfying dinner. However, their expectations are shattered when they see the disappointing meal that awaits them. But then, a delightful aroma fills the air, capturing everyone's attention. It turns out that Ayama is the one behind the enticing smell, as he takes charge of the cooking. With every bite of his delicious food, the team's initial disappointment is replaced with complete satisfaction. After dinner, Karin announces that the next activity will be a test of courage, with pairs formed using the software. Inside the haunted building, Zazen finds himself paired with Aoyama, feeling frightened and anxious. In contrast, Aoyama remains composed and unfazed by the eerie atmosphere. As ghost puppets begin to emerge, Godu instinctively grabs her bat, assuming a protective stance in front of Aoyama. Meanwhile, Mio hurries to catch up with Godu, realizing that they are paired together for this challenge. Meanwhile, a group of girls seizes the opportunity to plan a surprise attack, intending to hug Aoyama. However, Aoyama effortlessly evades their advances with grace, unaffected, and resumes his cleaning duties. With the completion of the Test of Courage, the haunted building undergoes a magical transformation, turning into a modern and pristine structure. Before retiring for the night, everyone takes pleasure in the remaining hours, cherishing the enjoyable atmosphere. Upon their return to the school after training, Zazen finds himself pondering about the mysterious woman Aoyama had encountered earlier. Aoyama's secretive nature piques everyone's curiosity, leaving them eager to uncover the hidden aspects of his life. As their first step towards unraveling the enigma, they hatch a plan to discreetly follow him and discover his place of residence. However, Zazen struggles to bear the weight of carrying Tichai on his back, causing him some difficulty. However, due to his loss in a game of rock-paper-scissors, Zazen is obligated to carry Tichai on his back. As they navigate through the crowd, they momentarily lose sight of Aoyama. Fortunately, their search ends when they spot him. Aoyama astonishes everyone by gracefully leaping off his bike from a considerable height. Just before he departs, he pauses and fixes a penetrating gaze upon them, seemingly implying that they should refrain from following him. However, their curiosity gets the better of them, and they decide to continue following Aoyama. Observing him closely, they witness him exiting a convenience store with an abundance of food. Intrigued, they tail him until he reaches a house. Without bothering to ring the doorbell, they boldly enter, knowing that Aoyama would likely refuse their request to enter if they asked. To their surprise, they discover that the person accompanying Aoyama is none other than Ibuki Sego, whom Zazen recognizes. He is a professional football player who recently joined Spain's youth team. Curious and perplexed, Zazen inquires about the reason Ibuki is in Aoyama's house. Ibuki calmly clarifies that it is, in fact, his own residence. Furthermore, he reveals that after Aoyama lost to him in a one-on-one -on -one match, Aoyama made a promise to prepare dinner for him. Zazen finds it hard to fathom that Aoyama could lose to someone in a game of football. The following day at school, Zazen and Godu notice Aoyama leaving without attending the training session. Intrigued, they decide to follow him discreetly. They eventually find themselves at Minami High School, where Aoyama is accompanied by Teikchai and the mysterious woman they encountered the previous day. To their astonishment, they discover that Ibuki is one of the players at Minami High. Aoyama initiates another one-on-one -on -one challenge with Ibuki, 
which raises concerns for Godu. However, Kirata reassures Godu, saying that Ayama and Ibuki have a deep understanding of each other's playing style, having been teammates on the national team. The first round commences, and Ibuki emerges as the victor. However, as the second round begins, Ayama abruptly cancels the challenge, noticing that Ibuki's performance is slightly off. That night, Ayama upholds his end of the deal and prepares dinner for Ibuki. As they eat, Ibuki reveals that his off performance earlier was due to a small argument he had with Kirata. He had added mayonnaise to the food she had prepared, which tasted unpleasant, resulting in her anger and departure from home. Upon hearing this, Ayama suggests that Ibuki call Kirata and invite her on a date to reconcile. Inspired by Ayama's advice, the following day Kirata and Ibuki embark on a date together. In the bookstore, Kirata extends her apologies for her previous outburst. She explains that the reason she got angry was because she had carefully prepared a well-balanced meal, Considering all the nutritional values, and seeing Ibuki ruin it with mayonnaise had frustrated her. As a gesture of apology, Ibuki presents Kirata with a gift that Ayama had given him. However, to Kirata's disappointment, the present turns out to be a book on how to cook tasty food for beginners. Feeling frustrated, Kirata angrily leaves the scene. On the other hand, after emerging victorious in the one-on-one -on -one match against Ayama, Ibuki finds himself feeling hungry. It is then that Kirata offers him the food she had prepared, stating that he can eat it if he wants to. Ibuki eagerly indulges in the meal, showing his genuine appreciation for Kirata's cooking. Witnessing Ibuki's enjoyment, Kirata's heart fills with joy and satisfaction as she realizes that Ibuki is finally beginning to appreciate her culinary skills. However, Ibuki dismisses Kirata's cooking, claiming that when one is hungry, everything tastes good. This statement triggers Kirata's frustration to reach its peak, and she abruptly storms off. Ayama observes the situation unfold and starts to question whether everything will be alright. The following day, during their training session, everyone becomes apprehensive upon noticing the presence of scouts once again. They speculate that Ayama might consider joining a more formidable youth club in order to pursue his dream of competing in the national championships. The next morning, Zazen visits his mother's grave with his father. In a flashback, he promises his mother to score a goal for her. Back in the present, Zazen stands before the grave and makes a renewed vow to score in the upcoming match. Before the game, Zazen looks at a photo, and his friends ask about the woman in it. Zazen proudly reveals that she is his mother. During the pre-match meeting, Coach Mio emphasizes the formidable strength of Kureishi High's defenders, highlighting their unbeaten record and zero goals conceded. She emphasizes the crucial role Zazen plays in breaking through their defense. However, Tsukamoto notices a hint of sadness in Zazen's expression when his mother's name is mentioned. Kazuma reveals that he saw Zazen earlier that morning, paying respects at a grave with his father, suggesting that today might be the anniversary of Zazen's mother's passing. While Zazen is in the restroom, Kazuma tells the team about Zazen's mother. Everyone agrees to support and cheer for Zazen wholeheartedly in the match, aiming to uplift his spirits and help him perform his best. The match starts, and Zazen eagerly tries to receive the ball, but he is immediately brought down by a defender. The strong defense of Kureishi Hai makes it challenging for Ayama to make an impact. Unfortunately, Zazen is taken down once again, leading to Kureishi Hai seizing the opportunity and scoring a goal on the counterattack. During halftime, with Fujimi High trailing, Zazen finds himself standing in front of a vending machine. Memories from the past resurface, as Zazen recalls the time when he was filled with excitement to share his team selection news with his mother. However, his excitement turned to heartbreak when the butler informed him that his mother had departed to a faraway place. The match resumes, and Zazen finds himself with the ball, yet struggles to navigate past the determined defenders. Coach Miwa encourages him to utilize his aerial skills, but Zazen appears hesitant and afraid. Meanwhile, Kureishi Hai takes advantage of a corner kick opportunity and scores another goal. Ayama attempts to showcase his dribbling abilities, but is quickly swarmed by a multitude of defenders. Zazen gets upset at Ayama for not passing to him, and Ayama explains that it wouldn't be helpful in Zazen's current state. Meanwhile, Kureishi Hai has the ball and is aware of Ayama's impressive late-game performance. They aim to score as many goals as possible before Ayama's time runs out. Kureishi Hai attempts to score another goal by challenging Zazen in the air. Right before the ball crosses the line, Ayama manages to save it. However, Ayama is visibly bothered by the dirt on his gloves. Witnessing Zazen's poor performance, Ayama straightforwardly advises him to substitute himself if he lacks the desire to win. Frustrated by Ayama's comment, Zazen regains his composure by forcefully hitting his head on the goalpost. The defenders rejoice upon realizing that Ayama's dirtied appearance has affected his agility. Seizing the opportunity, Kureishi Hai launches another attack to score. However, it is Zazen who steps up and successfully blocks their attempt. With just 5 minutes left on the clock, they must find a way to score. 
With Zazen reaching his physical limit, it becomes increasingly challenging for him to continue playing. Despite Fujimi High having possession of the ball, an inaccurate pass to the captain creates worry that they might miss a golden opportunity. However, Aoyama swiftly regains possession and skillfully maneuvers past the defenders before passing the ball to Zazen. As Zazen makes his final push to reach the ball, his legs are pushed to their limits. In that moment, he catches sight of his mother cheering for him from the stance. Summoning every ounce of strength he has left, Zazen successfully scores the goal. After it, Aoyama scores two more and with this Fujimi High won the match. Following the match, feelings of anger and betrayal arise among everyone as they realize that Zazen had deceived them into believing his mother was deceased. Zazen clarifies the truth, explaining that his mother had actually gone abroad to engage in social welfare work in different countries. Her unwavering dedication to her cause led her to lose track of time, resulting in nearly five years passing without contact. When questioned about his actions at the grave, Zazen clarifies that he was actually paying respects to his ancestors. He explains that it is a daily ritual performed by his father before leaving for work. Witnessing Zazen's goal, his mother expresses immense joy and embraces him tightly. Suddenly, a helicopter arrives at the scene. This time she goes to Brazil. Later in the evening, following Ayama's conversation with the scouts, the team gathers around him, eager to know his decision. Ayama responds with a hint of amusement, saying, well, it's quite obvious. I told them no. After all, I have a strong preference for white uniforms, and this high school is the only one that wears them. His teammates are taken aback by his unique reasoning and find it hard to believe. And that brings the video to an end. If you enjoyed watching it, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Also turn on notification bell so you'll never miss out new video. See you next time, take care.